Hello, welcome to this lesson in the AC Circuit Analysis Tutor. Here we're going to uh, work our final problem with AC phasor node voltage problem. And here we have it on the board. The interesting thing about this problem is we have a current source, which is a fixed current source, 10.6 at an angle of zero amps, um, and uh, which of course is a phasor representation, so this is an AC signal. And then you have a, um, a dependent uh, voltage source over here, which the value of which is 20 times Ix, where Ix is, is the current flowing through this uh, part of the circuit up there. Now we have some branch currents that are labeled here, Ia, Ib, and Ic, and the problem is use the node voltage technique and phasor analysis to find Ia, Ib, and Ic. So this is kind of a culmination of everything we've learned, but you need to just take it one step at a time and realize the technique is exactly the same as what we've done before. The first thing we need to do is figure out what is going to be our reference node and what are the node voltages that we're going to end up wanting to solve for. This problem, like many that you learn in uh, elementary circuit analysis, is going to have a constant bottom uh, part of the circuit there. There are no uh, components down here, so we're going to use this guy as our reference node, so we'll kind of draw our, our uh, triangle like that, saying that's our reference node, and then we have to figure out relative to this what are the nodes that we're going to be in, end up solving for in the problem. We have a node here and a node here of interest. There's really nothing else, you know, there. So we will put a plus uh, minus here, and we'll call this um, we'll call this V1. So this will be node uh, V1 up here, and then we'll have plus minus here, and we'll call this V sub two. So this is basically node one, node two. So we're going to end up writing a node voltage equation at this node, node number one. We're going to get that equation, simple, simplify it as, as much as we can, and then we're going to write a node voltage equation equation at node two. And we'll get that equation simplified as much as we can. If we do everything correctly, we should have two equations and two unknowns. The two unknowns that we'll have will be V1 and V2, which would be phasor voltages. Now, that's not the answer, okay? Of course, we want these currents. But once you have these node voltages, you can find any of these currents through the legs, through the branches there. And we'll get, we'll get there as we solve the problem. First, use the node voltage technique to find these node voltages. And then we'll deal with finding the currents that are uh, kind of running around the circuit as we go. So, the first thing we want to do is we want to, to write a node voltage equation at node 1. That's why you want to label it node 1 and node 2, so that when you're writing your math out, you can kind of say, well, this is the equation for node 1, etc. Well, here at node number 1, we have current going in, so this is going to be a negative 10.6 at an angle of 0 degrees. That's phasor uh, current going in. It's negative because it's going into the node. And then we have this uh, branch here and this branch right here. So if we're looking at this guy here, what would this current be? It's going to be V1 over whatever this voltage is, I don't know what it is, over 10. So you write your node voltage equations as if the current's flowing out of the node, unless you have clear indication it's going into the node and you make it negative. So this is positive because we're assuming it's coming out of the node like this. So V over R. And then we also have this current here. Now I know it's labeled I sub X, but don't worry so much about that. The current here is going to be V1 minus V2 over this impedance, 1 plus J2. All right. And then this is going to be equal to zero because it's essentially Kirchhoff's law right here at this node. So this is a current, this is a current, and this is a current. All of them must sum to zero. We assume that these two are going out of the node, and that's why they have positive signs. So, you know, I could just stop there and say, hey, here's a node voltage equation. Let's write another node voltage equation here. And I could make this problem like five minutes and say, hey, here's your two node voltage problems. Dump it in your calculator and find V1 and V2, because notice we have V1 and V2 here. And then we'll have another equation with V1 and V2 and be done. And I could short circuit everything and, and say, well, there you go. But the problem is when you